Our fourth speaker is Cree Métis Polish, born in Peace River. She is finishing her doctorate at the University of Calgary, exploring mathematics through Indigenous stories. Please welcome to the stage, Corey Chewy. I promise I have no equations. That was fantastic, thank you. Okay. So only when I came across this body tally counting system from Papua New Guinea while doing my master's degree did I ask, what is math and why does 2 plus 2 equal 4? Because for 2, for two plus 2 to equal 4, we have to have base 10, which is our 10 fingers. And this is clearly not that. So I began asking questions about math that I'd never asked before. Uh, this was math to me. It was only to be done in school. It was about memorization. Six eights is 48. Uh, I wasn't allowed to use my fingers to count in class. I, we always used those strange transparent coins and sticks to count that had no relation to anything outside of the math, the math classroom. So math was definitely not that to me. This was, this was my life. I, I didn't count with, sorry. <laughs> Math was definitely not connected with my body, which was what I did here. Art, music, cooking, sports. Um, but until I started my master's, my PhD, it was only when I began questioning mathematics and how we learned it and how my body related to it. Because the standard universal mathematics that is often taught as the one only correct mathematical worldview got its power from a hierarchy created through dismissing other mathematical worldviews and removing the human and culture rooted in the subject and its creation. Uh, these are some of the responses from grade fours when I asked them, how do you feel when you're doing math? <laughs> and what is math? So it is evident that there is a disconnect between math and the human. So I asked, how has this disconnect led to the rampant cases of math anxiety? So I reflected back on that Papua New Guinea body counting system and I found out that traditionally that system didn't have any oral or written number words attached to it. Where counting in trade was social, it was tactile. I thought about how reconnecting the body, the senses, community, land, and therefore culture with mathematics can allow math to be relational, more human, and less abstract. So I ban began exploring ethnomathematics from cultures globally and within Treaty 7. I work with kids to use their bodies as standard measurement and to count. We're counting and measuring with the hands, feet, and body allow for a more personal and sensory way to understand our surroundings by comparing and contrasting size with our bodies. Gainai elder Casey Eaglespeaker told us stories about how people use their bodies as measurement, where you can predict a cold winter by how many hands deep a ladybug or a wasp hibernates. Sutina knowledge keeper Hal, e Hal Eagletail told stories of measuring how far a muskrat would build its den away from the shore to also predict a cold winter. The farther away from shore, therefore the colder the winter. Uh, so these stories were passed on orally, but also sometimes documented as winter counts in many prairie indigenous communities. These calendars or yearbooks, you could say, recorded significant moments within the community such as those seasonal events we were talking about with very cold winters, which were observed through those predictive preparations by nature, like the ladybug or the muskrat. Um, it also recorded community-specific events, like naming ceremonies, or celestial events, like equinoxes or eclipses. So you can think of this as a spiral of stories, observed and experienced phenomena, counted amongst cycles of time through moon, sun, and stars. I began to see and experience mathematics through multiple ways of knowing. Like the Ishongo bone, for example, discovered in Congo, which has a series of notched tally systems in it. It was first explained as complex prime numbers by male archaeologists, but later a woman ethnomathematician, Claudia Zaslavsky, saw it and immediately said, well, that's just a woman marking her menstrual cycle. <laughs> uh, counting numbers and math have very deep cultural connections around the world. Like in Hawaii, four is significant because it connects to their two main food sources, fish and taro. Four represents spaces between your fingers, where when you go to the fish pond, you can bring four and four fish back from the pond, or four and four taro back from the fields. So therefore, four was very deeply ingrained in every part of their culture. Um, in Alaska, 20 is significant, where the Yupik people use a base 20 counting system. This includes 10 fingers and your 10 toes. Therefore, 20 in uh, the Alaskan Yupik culture uh, is pronounced as Yuinak, or also means a whole person, so your whole 10 fingers and 10 toes. 
So many numbers on this land, Treaty 7, are deeply also embedded with story, as we've also seen. Uh, Blackfoot elder Reg Crowshoe told stories of the Blackfoot teepee, where each pole represents a way to strive to be and to live, from child rearing and curiosity to understanding generations past, present, and those seven generations into our future. Casey Eagle Speaker speaks of seven as sacred, representing the seven sacred natural laws or grandfather teachings. Casey also speaks of the 13 full moons in a year in connection to the 13 yearly cycles of a woman. This number connects with the turtle in the creation story of Turtle Island, or North America, where all turtles have these 13 plates on their back. Uh, this, these represent the connections between the woman and her 13 cycles with Turtle Island, the earth, the tides, in connection to the 13 lunar cycles within the year. As we've seen, indigenous cultures and their mathematics is deeply connected to not only the land, but also the cosmos. So tracking significant stars and constellations through their own worldview, not the Greek worldview, this is the Cree star constellation chart. They track these to figure out times for hunting, when calving season was, ceremonies, harvests, and when to pick medicines. The Pueblo people of Chaco Canyon track the sun through upright rock slabs where daggers of sun jutted through these slits, landing on a spiral in the back, marking solstices, equinoxes, and even a rare 19-year lunar event we now call standstills. In Peru, quipus, these date back to 650 BC, and they're thought to at first be ancient mops. They turned out to be 3D counting or recording systems that you'd they used a complex seven-bit code of knots of different sizes and shapes, to record through these knots, corn harvest, babies born, battles won or lost, or those significant weather events. So all of these stories have deeply embedded mathematics as based on observation, experience, and spirit. Where cold winters are predicted by measuring hibernation with our hands, counting is not just in our heads, but also through our entire bodies and even between our fingers. Counting is sensory, social, spiritual, and understood with and through community and story. Thank you. Can I ask one more time?